Avoiding exaggeration, but I think we can say that this is an outstanding football team we're playing this week. You know, Florida State undefeated. Um, you know, just uh, they look like the Florida State of old when we first got here. They really do. When we first got here, I think they were coming off their national championship season. And uh, this looks like the Florida State of old. Uh, explosive on offense, um, stout, and they got dynamic playmakers on defense. They are exceptional and special teams. Uh, this is another team that just doesn't check the box on special teams. Uh, their coordinator's done it for a lot of years. He was at North Carolina, and he does a great job. You know, their kickoff return, their punt, their punt return unit, they, you know, they have an excellent returner and kick return and punt return. This is an extremely well-coached unit. And so what happens is if you have really good talent that's really extremely well-coached, you have great football seasons, and that's where they are. And Mike Norvell has done an incredible job there. Um, you know, they, they hired the right guy. Um, I got to know Mike at the Birmingham Bowl. Uh, you know, we spent quite a bit of time together there. Then we did an ESPN broadcast. We kind of stayed in touch. And uh, I, I knew when they hired him uh, that they were going to get back. Um, you know, they let him work through problems. Uh, and they let him fix things. And he had a vision for the program. And, and I would say this. I don't know if anybody uh, in the ACC has done a better job of embracing and maximizing what college football looks like in 2023. Um, and, and I mean that as a, a nothing but a compliment to Mike because there's places that probably have healthy collectives and money, but it's misspent. You know, they've done a great job of retaining their best players, you know, to get Jordan Travis to come back, to get Jared Verse to come back, to get Trey Benson to come back, to get Johnny Wilson to come back. Like, their best players are all back. And they lost some guys in the portal as well, but their ability to replace them, you know, with a guy like a Keon Coleman uh, or a Fentel uh, Cypress, you know, they've done a very, very good job of evaluating and picking players that fit them. And uh, he really has. He's, he's done an amazing job. Uh, and he's also very, very underrated as an offensive coach. It, like, Everyone talks about how well he's managed the portal in their roster. Uh, Mike is one of the very best strategic uh, offensive coaches in college football. He is very well thought out, and that goes back to when he was at Memphis. It goes back to when Florida State didn't have these players. He's always a challenge to get ready for. Um, I don't think he gets enough credit for how good of an offensive play caller, designer uh, he is. And, uh, and how his offense has evolved as he's had the personnel to fill it. Um, again, he's doing an amazing job. Again, it starts with their quarterback, uh, Jordan Travis. I'm not quite sure why he's not involved in the Heisman discussion. You know, he is a major reason why they're undefeated. And he's an accurate thrower. He's a great runner. His ability to extend plays and keep his eyes down the field they make so many big plays off of scrambles because his field vision is so good. Uh, when Mike got there, they had to rebuild the O-line. Their O-line has 183 combined starts, um, and it's really good. Uh, Trey Benson is one of the best tailbacks we face. You know, he's 223 pounds, but he can hit a home run. And, you know, he can run you over, he can run by you. Uh, I've been here 10 years. In my 10 years in the ACC, Keon Coleman is as good as any receiver we've faced. 6'4", 215, some of the catches he makes is uh, their highlight film stuff. The one-handed grabs, the catch he made last week against Duke that he caught the ball between his legs. Uh, and he's also an excellent punt returner. Uh, Johnny Wilson, if he can play, I thought last year he was one of the best receivers we faced. Uh, their tight ends, uh, Morlock and Bell are both really good athletes. You know, there's not, there, there's not one thing you can say, well, if you stop this, you stop them. And, and he's got answers. And he's patient, and he kind of sets you up with this, and then he gives you that. 
And so it's, it's really well thought out. Uh, their defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller, worked for me at Richmond, and he is an excellent football coach. Uh, I recommended him to Mike when he was at Marshall, and he hired him at Memphis in 18, and I'm, I'm happy for Adam. I kind of, this week I regret that move a little bit. Every year you regret that move. What's that? Every year you regret that move. He's, it comes up. yeah, he's a good, he's a really good football coach, and they play a lot of players uh, on both sides of the ball. I think what makes Florida State uh, so good this year is just their depth. They'll play 21 different guys on defense. And so what he does is it does two things. He keeps guys fresh and he keeps them happy. And, but he also has internal competition. I'm sure at Florida State, if you go out there and you don't show up for practice and you don't play well, there's another guy you're competing every day with to, uh, to compete for playing time. And uh, you know they play a lot of guys, but up front, Verse is an excellent player. They got a transfer from Western Michigan, Fisk, who's really good. Uh, Lovett came back for them. Farmer, 44, is, is as good as any of them. I mean, they've really got three or four elite inside guys. Uh, the linebacker, Deloach, is so productive. 37 tackles, five and a half TFLs, three and a half sacks. You know, he's an undersized middle linebacker, but he tackles everything. Bethune, who came from Central Florida the year before, we thought last year was one of the best linebackers in the league. And it looks like a Florida State secondary. You know, Cypress and Green are two lockdown corners. Their safeties are good tacklers. They blitz them a lot. Uh, they get a lot of pressure. And like I said before, these guys are really good in the special teams. Their kicker, Fitzgerald, kicks it in the end zone almost every time on kickoffs. Uh, the punter is averaging uh, a good amount, and their returners, you know, Spawn and Coleman is the punt returner. So this is a good football team. So we, uh, we're excited about the challenge. Uh, I think it was very important that we get last week's game, and, you know, we're at noon, uh, ABC, uh, big game against, you know, arguably probably the best team we'll play this year. So our, our guys are looking forward to the challenge, and with that, I'll open it up to questions. Dave, how do you combat playing a team that's that fast? I mean, they're fast at every position. Is there any one key, you think? You know, I, I think when you play a team that fast, uh, the big thing on defense is you got to get the ball on the ground, right? You just got to – they're, they're going to make yardage and they're going to make first downs. I don't think anybody's going to shut these guys down. But the games that get out of control is when they have a lot of explosives. You know, they had a lot of explosives against Syracuse. They had a lot of explosives against, uh, you know, Virginia Tech. And those games became wide margins early. Now, Virginia Tech came back and made it 22-17. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just you, you got to get the ball on the ground and you got to make them snap it again. And really, you know, that's why we had success a year ago. Um, you know, they, they made some big plays, but we got the ball on the ground, and then we got a few red zone stops, and they missed some field goals, and, and that was really the key to the game. And, and this year, their red zone offense um, is, you know, one of the best in the country. It's the best in the ACC. And a year ago, the last few years, they had struggled at kicker, and this year their kicker hasn't missed a kick. He's perfect extra point in field goals. And, you know, that's what good coaches do. When they have problems, they fix their problems. And, and Mike has, you know, any personnel gaps they had, he's done a really good job of filling them. And then again, compliments to him and his staff. They have filled them with the right people. And, and not just are they good players, but they're players that clearly fit what he's trying to do. It just, he just didn't go out there and, and grab guys for the sake of grabbing them. You know, like Keon Coleman, you know, we have you know, coaches that coached at Purdue, and they know how good that guy was at Michigan State. But I would say how Mike is utilizing him in the offense. They've taken a good player, and they're, they're maximizing all of his special abilities. They move him all over the place. So you can't just say he's a slot or an outside receiver. You know, they're going to find a matchup for him. And, and Mike's patient enough and a good enough play caller to wait to take his shot and get the matchup he wants. And... More times than not, Jordan's putting the ball right in the money. Dave, from a non-expert standpoint, these receivers look like some of the best blocking receivers you'll face this year. What, what's your take on how they do as blockers, and how, how do you 
combat that defensive? Well, they're, they're big guys. You know, Johnny Wilson's 6'7", 240. Coleman is 6'4", 215. Uh, you know, the tight ends are, are big guys. You know, there, there are other receivers. Uh, Portier is 6'3", 205. You know, their slot, Destin Hill, is six foot 195. I mean, these guys are, are big guys. And again, when you have that many good receivers and your practices are that competitive, I'm sure they have to block or they don't play. And when you have a back like Trey Benson or, you know, Rodney Hill and, and, and Holmes, that you know every, you know, there's enough plays that get to the second and third level that, I'm sure in practice at some point at some point they didn't make a block and the safety made the play and then they show on film if you make that block that's the difference between a 15 yard play and a 50 yard play. Um, and so that just you know I think it's it's year four for Mike and the players have all been in the same system now and they understand what to do and his culture and, and the things that he wants has taken hold.